Hi everyone and welcome back to the Multibirds of 100 plus data science project series. In this video, we are going to discuss about the credit card fraud directions using Python and machine learning. So, bina kisi tarah ke har har mahade bolke start karte hain tutorial. In order to building the credit card fraud directions, you are going to using the dataset from the Kaggle that's called the credit card fraud directions. And this is a dataset having one CSV file and containing 31 columns. So now using these columns, we are going to classify them which one is a fraud transaction and which one is a normal transactions. So in order to download the data set, just need to go on here and create one account on that. And after that, just click on the download button. After downloading the data set from the Kaggle, you can get here one CSV file that's called creditcard.csv. Now using this CSV file, you are trying to building one machine learning model. And also you can see here one IP one file, this is completely empty. And for this project, you can using here the Jupyter Notebook. You can also using here the Google Colab or Python itself. Well, so that's our empty IP one file. And in this file, I'm trying to do the coding part here. So first thing first, what I need to do, I need to load the data set from a directory. Into loading the data set from a directory, we're going to be using here the pandas. So let's say I'm going to import here the uh, pandas as uh, pd and shift enter. You can also using here the run button instead of using the shift and enter. Then I am going to import the data set from my working directory. So make sure that your IP one file in the same directory. So let's say I'm going to be using here pd.read underscore csv because this is a csv file comma separated below file then inside that i'm going to be giving here my path of my data so if, if you see that uh, this data set this credit card dot csv file inside my same working directory so i simply going to giving here this name of that so let's say credit uh, card dot csv okay just like that then I store it inside a variable that's called data okay and shift enter it is loading this data set from my directory. If I try to see this, let's say data, then I'm going to be using here data.hat. Okay. Then you can see the five uh, first of the row and the columns. Okay. Then you can see here it having time uh, B1, B2, B3. This is nothing but the features column. Now using this feature, I need to predict them uh, which one, uh, which one is actually fraud transaction and which one is a normal uh, transaction. Okay. Just like that. So now what I can do, you can also uh, add here the options just like for showing the uh, maximum columns, you can also using this one or otherwise you can also neglect this one. Let's say pd dot options uh, dot display. Okay, display, uh, display dot max column. So C L O U M and columns equal to none. Okay, if you're now using this one, let's say data dot head. And after that, uh, you can see just to white you can see here all of the columns right all of the columns but in here you can see here uh, some uh, column is actually neglected in our Jupyter notebook if you are using this pd option dot display dot max column none it will show all of the columns okay it will show all of the columns because it have 31 columns so if you want to see that let's say right after the b9 you can also see this using this one pd dot options dot display dot max column equal to none okay fine now what i can do uh, now I am going to first uh, checking for the last okay last five rows of the data set in order to checking that we can using here data dot tail in order to uh, get in the last uh, five columns of our data set this is the first five columns of the five rows and this is the five uh, last five rows of my data set okay this is our data set how it look like and you can see it having 28,000 uh, no 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 what 28,000 it have 2 lakhs uh, 84,806 uh, rows that's so many features okay now if i try to check in the shape of that let's say data dot shape and you can see this is the shape of our data how many data is actually available now you can see it it just having 806 okay but you can see the data shape is nothing but 807 why because this is index is starting from the zero index it is also counting this one it's also counting this one and this is nothing but uh, the um, the count of the row and this is nothing but the count of the columns that's been it having 31 columns and 2 lakhs 84,807 rows. Okay, that is nothing but the entity. Okay, now using this column, what I can do, I am simply going to building one uh, machine learning model. That's my that's my that's my dream to building this one, right? Now you can also shape, you can also uh, checking that how many rows and the how many columns are available here. We see that it having the this kind of row and this kind of column. You can also printing this one. You can also printing this one. Let's say. Uh, I'm trying to printing here numbers of column. Okay, uh, number of uh, column. Okay, like that. Okay, you 
we're also using here on a format specifier that's a format uh, format and inside that what i can do uh, numbers columns right so number of columns is nothing but the index number one so we can just copy this one this shape and after that we can using here the one now if number of columns is nothing but 31 you can also remove this one this print statement but using the format specifier that's why you need to using here this uh print method okay if i'm trying to copy this one and try to checking for also the rows okay let's say rows and you can also checking this one like this way okay you can see number of rows and number of columns this is how you're going to check this okay now uh, let's try to taking the information regarding my data set okay so in order to take in the information regarding our data set you can using here data.info so which actually gave me information regarding my data set that how many columns are available and uh, the data type and is there any missing value or not and you can see that uh, there's no missing value available inside my data set that's mean I don't need to handle the missing value and also you can see here data type is nothing but float 64 all of them are float 64 except the class except the class now the question is what is the class what is the class this is the class we just need to predict them we need to predict them that's when this is one super biased machine learning problem this is one super biased machine learning problem because our target class is given but if it is an unsupervised machine learning problem just like the customer chart predictions so we need to using here the k uh, k segment types of tags okay that's when this is a class train types of tags if it is a class train types of tags that's when this is an unsupervised machine learning problem but here is it supervised machine learning problem so when i go deeper on this series we also discuss about the unsupervised machine learning problem also okay now uh now what i can do we can also uh we can also checking that is there a null value or not we see that there is no null value yeah if you have if you have the null value how can you check that how can you check that okay let's say data dot is null okay dot sub you can checking this way so you can see here it don't have any null value okay it don't have any null value if you need to um checking this is there any null value or not now the question is why i chosen this data set why i chosen this data set uh, because uh, see it having 31 column also this is a great example great example of handling imbalanced data set handling imbalanced data set this is a great example of choosing this one credit card fraud directions because this they are having the last number of uh, target classes okay has <laughs> okay now what i can do uh, we can do uh, first uh, checking that uh, with how many data uh, are available inside my data set i mean uh, in my target class okay so this is how you can check that if the data set is balanced or imbalanced but uh, let's try to uh, let's try to do it later on first we can do uh, follow here our general process that how can you building on machine learning problem just in order checking that if there are any imbalance or not okay so now what i can do i am first going to convert our data set in the standard scalar because this is nothing but a floating point data and also it having some negative numbers of value so i am simply going to import here the standard scalars and try to put it try to put it inside my standard scalar first we are going to go on the general machine learning approach then we try to handling the imbalanced data set okay now i am going to import it uh, scalar.preprocessing <clears throat> and i am going to import here the standard scalar you can also using here this tab okay tab from your key, uh, keyboard and it will give you the o2 suggestion but first time it will take time okay let's try to import it okay let's import card there okay standard scalars now i'm simply going to creating one instance of that called a standard scalar okay a standard scalar see we don't actually checking for class uh, variable here that how many values are available here because we just following here the first thing if you are a beginner First, you come here and checking this is there null value or not, and then you are applying here the standard scalars. Then you apply here the machine learning algorithms. We are going to using this one first. Using this one first. Then after that, how many accuracy got? How many f one could you got? And checking that, checking that. After checking that, then you can go for handling the imbalanced data set. Okay. Now what I can do? I am simply going to uh, uh, transform our data set. You can see uh, it having one column that's called amount. Okay, so first I'm going to uh, convert this one, uh, the straight scalars, because if you see, uh, this is also neg some negatives value also. Also, you can see here this amount is quite higher 
is quite bigger than this kind of value. Okay, this balance. Uh, okay, okay. One one thing one thing noticed. See, this data set is already in the standard format. Already in a standard format. Uh, 0.1, 1.0 like that. Okay, but you can see this data set of the amount columns. Uh, it's having some high skew value. Okay, how skew value? You can see a 217. Uh, 67 so first what you can do is simply going to convert this amount to the scalar scalar to the scalar scalar so what you can do you can using here data and then after that you can using here the amount okay amount equal to sc dot fit transforms okay fit transform and after that you could using here pd dot data frame data frame okay and inside that i'm going to pass in my data of an amount okay amount that's it now our data set is um is converted this amount column is converted in in the range of zero to one okay so what i can do you can check in this data dot head now if i check in this one just to white now you can see this amount columns this amount columns is now converted in the range of zero to one like that okay this type of way now we can use in this amount column in our data set also okay just i have a mistake that uh, I just need to using here all these columns. Okay, yeah, and you can see because we have an amount columns, so we don't need to, we don't want to lose in this amount column. And we also see that this data set is quite skew, and it's also assume that the machine learning algorithm should be an outlier because it's having the high value. It having the high value. So what I can do is simply going to using here the standard color and try to make it, try to make it a form so that we can use it as a feature also. You know, particularly in the class. Okay. Now, what I can do, you can uh, also remove this time column. Uh, if I go here, uh, time time is not necessary. This is quite a skew. <laughs> okay, you can remove this time columns. So we can, uh, you can also make it as standard scalars, but I don't think that time is necessary, okay? So what I can do, you can using here, uh, uh, okay, data.drop, you can simply drop it out. So data.drop, and what I'm gonna drop here, we're gonna drop in here the time column. So let's say time, and we're also giving here axis, so axis equal to one, I mean columns. And after that, we let's store it inside the same variable called data. Okay, our data is uh, clean now, and we don't have the time column yet. Okay, we have the B1 to 2829. We have 29 feature now, and now we need to break them class. Okay, we need to break here the class. Okay, now what I can do, uh, we need to also check in that, is there any duplicate value or not? Is there any duplicate value or not? See, we remove there. We also check for that if there any missing value or not. Now, we need to checking that is there any duplicate value or not? Because this is um ho sakta hai machine learning algorithm pe. Okay. Now we can using here data dot duplicate. Okay. So duplicate it uh, dot any. Is there any duplicated value or not? And uh, yeah, it having some duplicated value. We check that yes, it's having some duplicated value. So what I can do, we can simply du remove this duplicate data from our data set. So we can using here data dot drop uh, duplicate, okay, drop duplicates, okay, and we simply store it inside the same variable called data, okay. Now if you try to check in the shape of the data, uh, and now you can see how many duplicate value it have. It have uh, more than it's just having the 84, I think, I guess. Yeah, 84. Now it is decreases to 75. How many duplicated values are available in my data set? Okay. Now, what I can do, uh, we can now checking that <laughs> the important one if the data is balanced data set or the imbalanced data set. Okay. Now, after that, you can check this if the data is imbalanced, what kind of uh, technique that you need to use and what kind of technique we don't need to use, okay? Now, we can go into checking for the class, okay? So let's say uh, data and class, and let's checking for the first value counts, okay? Uh, value counts, okay? <clears throat> okay, now you can see here, this is for the zero, and this is for the one, that how the data is quite imbalanced, quite imbalanced data set. Just having the 473 entries for one and 275,190 data are a normal transactions. That means this data is quite imbalanced. Quite imbalanced. Okay. 
so you need to handle in this one you need to handle in those one so that's why i chose in this data set call credit card fraud detections if you have the quite a imbalanced types of data set how can you handle them we also handle these ones in our deep learning uh, project also just like the brain tumor image classification and also pneumonia classification we checking that we have just less number of data the imbalance data we also make it more in order to uh, removing the uh, problems that is happening while you're building the model okay now let's try to let's try to let's try to uh, let's try to plotting this out okay so we can use it here the seaborn so let's say seaborn uh, as as sns because seaborn have the um, count plot method so you can also import here let's say from matplotlib uh, dot pyplot uh, as plt and you can using here plt dot style dot use let's say using here the gg plot gg plot okay okay pyplot as matplotlib dot pyplot okay syntax error Okay, what kind of syntax error is it? Uh, okay, it's imported, but yep, it is giving me the error. Uh, import, okay, import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. Now, okay, fine. Okay, now you can using here the sns dot count plot. Okay, count plot, and you can be buffing here my data, and after that, I'm gonna using here my class. Causing the PLD dot show like this way, but I don't think that PLD dot show is necessary. Okay, now you can see here uh, this how the data set is look like. It's just having all of the values are zero and just last number of values are one. This data set is highly imbalanced data set. This is this data set is highly imbalanced data set. So first we check that without handling the imbalance, without handling imbalance. How our machine learning model perform? How our machine learning model is performed? Then we are going to apply here some uh, imbalanced dataset technique and try to uh, predict in this one. Try to predict in this one. Okay. So for that, what you can do? First, you're going to uh, uh, first you're going to actually divide our dataset into dependent and independent features. I mean x and the y. So for the x, you're going to be using here data dot drop, and we're simply going to drop in here the class and store it inside the x. And it also giving here x is equal to one because from the column you're simply going to drop it out. And for the y, you're going to be using here data of class. That's it. So divide our data set into dependent and independent features for x and y. Now we're simply going to divide our data set into train test and split. So for that, uh, we simply need to import it also. So let's say from scale learn dot model selection. Uh, selection and I'm going to import in here the train test and split so train test and split that's it now after that I'm simply going to pass our X data and also Y data inside my train test and split okay so that's our X comma Y then we have the test ratio which is called the test size equal to 0 0.2 and we're also giving here one random state equal to 42 that's it okay now let us store it inside the variable called x train x test okay x train and x test x test okay x test okay thoda speed ho hai na y train y cast that's it okay we divide our data set in the train test and split now what i can do uh, now we simply going to apply here the machine learning algorithm we're simply going to using here the machine learning algorithm so for that we can we need to also importing this one uh, we need to importing here uh, some of the machine learning algorithms okay let's try to importing all of them so first we need to import in the numpy fnp fnp then we need to importing here uh, we need to importing here the logic regressions so let's say from sklearn uh, dot linear model and I'm going to import in here, uh, let's see, import in here the logistic regressions. Okay. Then from scale learn, scale learn uh, dot, uh, let's start using here the random forest. So let's say ensemble, 
ensemble then i'm going to be putting here the random forest random forest classifier and from a scale learn dot tree i'm going to be putting here the decision tree uh, decision tree then i'm going to be importing here let's say from a scale learn scale learn uh, dot matrix and i'm going to import here the accuracy score accuracy score okay accuracy 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 score then f1 score then it having the precision uh precision score then recall score okay that's it okay so import other necessary library calls import here uh, more of the machine learning algorithm just like the neighbors or the multi nubial and b just like that okay so now what you can do is simply going to apply here uh, the machine learning algorithm in order to checking that how our data actually give me the accuracy okay so now what i can do i am simply going to actually creating here one classifier dictionary and inside this dictionary we simply going to uh, uh, we are simply going to initialize here the which kind of machine learning model we are using here. So first we are going to using here the logistic regressions, logistic, uh, logistic regression. Okay, and creating here one instance of that logistic regressions, and after that we are going to using here the decision tree classifier, decision tree classifier. Okay. And after that, you're going to be using here this decision tree classifier. Okay, decision tree classifier. Okay, it's your homework to do it with the random forest and also the near bias algorithms. It's your text. I'm just going to be using here two algorithms, logistic regressions and also the uh, decision tree classifier. Then you can also using at here more of them. So I just actually for the testing purpose, I'm going to be using here the two one. It's your homework to do that with using the another kind of machine learning algorithms okay now what you can do i'm simply going to iterate to all the value from here so let's say for uh name okay not for name and also the classifier in the classifier dot items because this is one dictionary so first it actually give me the key then it having the value so name is nothing but my key i mean which kind of model is it is it the logistic regressions or the decision the classifier it give me the classifier name i mean this classifier is nothing but instance of that and after that we can print in here on a statement let's print one statement using the f string so let's say uh, like this way let's say backslash n backslash n and just simply going to like this way and using here the name i mean which kind of model is printing right now and after that we can using here this one okay fine now we can using here this classifier to feed them our data so let's say clf dot fit and inside this feed, we're going to passing here my x train and also my y train. That's it. Okay, we fit our data right now. And after that, we need to also give here the predictions. So let's say predict. And uh, we have to predict here based on my tax data, I mean tax data. Okay. <clears throat> and let us store into the y predictions. This is my prediction below. Now, using this one, I can checking the accuracy. So let's say accuracy, uh, accuracy score accuracy score and inside is accuracy score i'm going to pass in my y test and my y prediction value that's it now let, let assign it to the variable called accuracy okay and also what i can do i am simply going to print in this one so let's say print here uh the accuracy let's say f and backslash n and it's called accuracy okay accuracy uh accuracy okay accuracy right this way uh thoda garbar ho gaya. okay accuracy and we can passing here this value on here so we can using here uh the accuracy method otherwise you can use in this one also okay so using this one we don't need to using this one right now then we going to copy this one and simply going to uh do the precision recall and also the apple score so let's say precision precision uh then you have the recall and also having the f1 score so f1 score so make it capital f1 score 
and I just need to change in this one accuracy score uh, to the precision score uh, and this uh, recall for recall and F1 to F1 okay now simply going to shift enter and loss regression is loaded right now and it will try to classify this one and break in this one and you can see it having 99% accuracy on my data set without handling the imbalance okay and the precision we got 88% uh, the recall is 0.60 and F1 score is 0.71% see when your data set is imbalanced you can check only for the accuracy matrix not also checking for the precision recall and also the F1 scores if the all of them columns value I mean all of the values are uh, mostly equal just like uh, just like 99% 98% all of the values that's when your model is perfect that's when your model is working very properly but if you're checking for just for the accuracy metrics without checking for the precision recall or the f score okay that's your mistake that's your mistake so that's why i just go for generals general machine learning models approach that what should a beginner do beginner should come on here and try to uh, do the strange colors and after that you like should apply here the machine learning columns that's the wrong path that's the wrong path First, you're checking that the uh, accuracy score, just not checking the accuracy score. You're also checking the precision, recall, and F1 scores. Okay? Then you can see same thing, 0.99 accuracy. Fine, good. But precision is 68%, 76%, 72%. Now, our task, our task is to increasing this one, this precision, recall, and the F1 score. Okay? Now, what I can do, we simply going to handling this one. Handling this one, this is called the data imbalance. Data imbalance, you know, to balance them. We have to balance them. So, there are two methods to actually handle the imbalance data sets. One is called the oversampling, and another one is called the undersampling. First one is called the oversampling, and another one is called the undersampling. So, what I can do is simply going to apply here this technique, apply those techniques, and try to try to building this one. Okay, try to building this one now. What I can do is simply going to actually using here uh, first the undersampling, then you're going to using here the oversampling. Okay, now let's try to using here the undersampling. So what is the nothing but the undersampling? Undersampling means if you have the last number of data, you can see it having just uh, 473 data. That's mean we simply going to remove them, remove all of the value except the 473 columns. 473 ltd or 473 rows in our data okay that's mean you can see for the one we have the 473 same thing for the zero to making the 473 so there's a problem that your data is lost your data is lost for the undersampling your data has, must be lost because you have 2,75,190 data but when you're using the undersampling most of the data is actually uh, gone okay most of the data set is data is gone this is a technique for handling the imbalance data set there's another technique called the under sampling under sampling means you have 473 data set for the minority class you need to making this majority you need to making this kind of majority under sampling means you need to remove making this data set based on the majority class sorry minority class for the over sampling you need to making this data set based on the minority class that's means for the over sampling you need to making this column to be 275,190 75, like this way okay now let's apply here the under sampling first so under uh, sampling okay okay under sampling means you know to making the data working with the data with the minority class okay so what i can do we have the two data uh, one is called the normal and another is called the fraud transactions so you can using a normal okay normal equal to data and you said is data i'm going to be taking all of the uh, class with having the zero okay so let's say class uh, equal to equal to zero that's nothing but my uh, normal data and we have another data called the fraud okay let's call the fraud so let's say fraud okay fraud that's it now if you're checking this one let's say one and shift enter and if you try to check in this normal dot shape so normal dot shape uh, then you can see how many data is normal. Okay, this is a normal data. Now let's check in the fraud. Okay, fraud dot shape, and you can see. Oh, thoda mistake ho gaya. Dot shape. 
and you can see how your data set look like 473 okay now what you can do in order to converting this data uh, this normal data with the shape of uh, 473 cross 30 okay so well so now what I can do we simply going to taking the sample of 473 so for that we're going to taking the sample from the normal so let's say normal uh, dot sample okay just we're going to take the sample from the normal because this is the last number the minority class uh, because we're doing here the under sampling so we're simply going to take the sample from the normal and after that i'm going to give in here number of sample equal to 473 that's my sample number now what i can do i am simply going to store it inside the variable called uh, normal uh, sample okay like that okay so now my sample is taken now we can check the shape of my normal sample so let's try to check the shape of that so you can see here it having the 473 samples now after that what i can do is simply going to uh, add it inside my uh, data set just uh, add it inside the fraud and the normal so that we can get here our new data because we divide our data set in the normal and the fraud now we're simply going to add them i mean concatenate them so how can we concatenate them we can concatenate them using the pandas so for that you're going to using here pd dot and you can using here the method called concat okay concat and after that uh, we're going to pass in here my normal sample this normal sample and also my fraud this fraud okay because in the normal sample from the normal sample we're taking the 473 samples now it also giving here the ignore index because we don't need to uh, uh, take care of the index we can ignore it so let's say ignore index equal to true and this is my new data set so let's make it new data okay new underscore data like this one okay that's our data set is uh, created now we can check this one new data dot hat for checking this one now you can see here this is our new data set with having uh, 473 okay 73 rows and having 30 columns okay now you can also try to checking this one uh, what you can do you can using here new uh, data and inside that you can passing here the class and you can simply using the value counts okay value on counts that's it okay so it will give me you can for view it having the 473 and for one it having the 473 so there is a problem uh, when you actually using the under sampling the problem is data lost data is lost here because it having more amount of 275000 data but in this case we taking just having 473 data that's mean uh, data loss is happening okay so my recommendation is uh, better you can go for the uber sampling okay so now what I can do is simply going to divide our data set into train, test and split again. Uh, but before that, it also make it dependent and independent features. So we can copy this one, just copy these things. And after that, we can simply uh, drop it for my new data, for my new data, and also this one new data. Okay. Now our data set is divided into the dependent and the independent features. Now we can simply uh, uh, divide it our data set into train ten, test and split so we can copy this one and simply paste it here and shift enter and after that we can also copy this one because all of the uh, necessary uh, library is also imported so we can pass it here okay now you can see after that after uber sampling sorry after under sampling we can see here we got accuracy 92 percent and now you can see precision recall and the f1 score is also increases also increases but if you don't handle in this imbalance data set you can see you got here uh, 88 percent 60 percent 71 percent which one is really unconvenient okay so what you can do you can simply uh, using here this over sampling under sampling and we got here 98 um, percent recall 93 percent f1 score 94 percent precisions and also you can see for the decision tree we got here 89 percent 89 percent 89 percent quite good amount of accuracy precision recall we got okay so don't go for just for accuracy metrics you know checking for the precision recall f1 score then you can see that maybe something happening inside the data set maybe the problem of the imbalance data set or maybe the problem of the handling the missing value or the duplicate value well so now what i can do is simply going to go for the word sampling so what is actually word sampling 
Overt sampling means if you, if you see, uh, we have 473 data. We're taking the minority class. In the Uber sampling, we're taking the majority class, right? We can take in the samples. We cannot take in the sample. So for the Uber sampling, there are some, there are some, there are some technique, okay? Like smooth, we can actually use in this one and try to increasing the data for one, for the fraud, okay? So now what I can do first, I'm going to divide our data set in the dependent and the independent features. So for that, I'm taking some shell. And after that, I'm going to convert this new data to the data. Uh, data and this new data to the data. Okay. Now if I try to check in the shape of my data. Okay. So this is my shape of the data. And if I try to check in the shape of my data. Uh, why? So you can see this is the shape of the data. How many data are available. Now we can apply here the Uber sampling technique. So there are a library called the IMB learn and from the IMB learn you can actually import the smooth. So the smooth is a technique in order to smoothing your data and try to increase your target classes variable. Let's say I have 473 uh, below. Now I can make it 275,663 like that. So for that I'm going to import it Let's say from IMB learn dot over sampling underscore sampling. And on sampling, I'm going to be importing here the smooth. Okay, fine. Now I'm going to use the smooth. And after that, I can fit and replace, not transform, fit and replace because I have 473 just normal data for the one. I need to convert them into 2,75,663, like that. So I can resample them. I can resample them, not replace. Resample them to the X and Y. Okay. And let's say this is my resampling data. So res, and let's say this is y res, like this way. So we can make it like say x, and this one. Fine. Now what I can do? We can now do the value count. So let's say try to do the value count for that. Y res, and try to do the value counts. Okay. Because in the y axis and in the y variable, we have the all of the classes. Now you can see for the zero and the one is converted into the same types of classes. Same types of classes. You can see for the zero, it have two lakhs, 75,000, 190 and 190. Okay, it will try to increase or decrease this one and try to make it uh, in a range. Okay, that's fine. Now you can simply going to apply here the machine learning algorithms. So we can just copy this one and we can using here, uh, instead of X and Y, you can using here the X, R, E, X. And we can using here the Y R E S. Okay, simple. Now we can apply here our machine learning algorithm. Now we can copy this one, and after that we can pass it here and try to shift enter. Okay, I think I think it having some problem. Uh, problem ho chakta hai kya? So what? Okay, no problem here. Okay, you can see here ninety four percent accuracy, ninety seven percent, ninety one percent, ninety four percent for the logistic regressions. So your task is to also do it for the random forest classifier, SBC, the nebias, whatever you can, okay? Now you can see it will take time for the decision tree classifier, okay? And we got here 94% accuracy in the lowest regression. Let's see uh, how much accuracy can got in our decision tree with having the precision recall and also the F1 score, right? Well, so now you can see here we got here 99% accuracy on the decision tree, 99% precision, 99% recall, 99% f1 score this is how you can handling the imbalance data set and that's why i chose this one credit card fraud detections okay now what i can do we simply going to saving this model it's called the decision tree classifier so for that what i can do we can using here this decision uh, tree classifier and after that i can store it, let's say one variable called dtc and after that i can using here this dtc dot fit uh, with my data called x R E S and also having Y R E S. Let's see. Okay. Now this is my model. It will also taking time, but no problem. Let's do the uh, do the code for how can you saving the model. For saving the model, you can also using here the pickle. But let me uh, use here another technique called job lib. So for that, I'm going to be putting here the job lib. So job lib, and I'm going to use here job lib, and after that, I'm going to be using here job lib dot dump. Uh, dump and inside this dump I can giving here my uh, model name which kind of model decision declassifier 
and I'm, I'm going to give, pass it here. And after that, I'm using here one model name. Let's call credit uh, card. Okay, credit card. Uh, let's say credit card, credit underscore card underscore model, like this one. Okay, underscore model dot equal file. Okay, and try to making, you can also giving it the mode, but in this case, you, in this job lib, you don't need to put in here, is it a write mode or the read mode like this one. Okay, now it will dump it inside your working directory. And after that, you can simply go into load your model. So let's say model equal to job lib. Okay, job lib dot load. Uh, if you if you share it with your friend, you, you, your friend is also going to use it in the later on. So we can pass in here the same thing, credit card underscore model dot pickle file, and going to pass it inside this. Okay, so model equal to job lib dot load this credit card underscore model dot pickle file. So now it's time to do the predictions. So what you can do, you can using here model dot predict. Okay, you can using here model dot predict, and inside this predict functions and in this predict method. We can give in here some values. So let's taking some values from here and let's make it prediction. Let's say make it predict and let's go on the folder and try to using this one credit card dot CSV and try to copy uh, some values from here. Okay, so this is the values. So we can copy from here and we can just remove this time value or accept the time values because in our data set we're removing here the time variables. So you can copy this one and go on here again. And now you can see it's imported and also credit card model.pickle file is also uh, added on here. You can see here a credit card underscore model.pickle file. And now what you can do, you can simply go to paste it here. Okay, we can paste it here. And that's our model and it will give me the predictions. So now let's try to checking that uh, which kind of prediction we can got. So let's see using his predict. And after that, you can using here the zero. So this is given zero. That's been normal uh, transactions. Okay. So let's say if the predictions is equal to equal to let's say prediction is equal to equal to zero. Uh, that's mean it is nothing but one normal transactions. Okay. Uh, let's say print and let's say this is called normal transaction. Normal transaction from uh, section. Otherwise, it should be the fraud transactions. Okay. Let's make it. Uh, transaction like this one. The prediction of the zero index is nothing but zero. That's mean this is normal. Otherwise, it should be the. Let's make it else. Okay. Otherwise, it should be the fraud transaction. Okay. Fraud transaction. Let's try to checking this one. Now you can see this is one normal transaction. This is how it is actually really work. So you can also add it inside uh, one applications just like the stream lead or the flux application and try to checking this one that is really working or not so that's your task to do that that how can you building one flux applications and also stream lead. okay it's your homework to do that okay it's your homework to do that to making one flux application and try to test it out right it having 29 features just creating 29 box and after that creating one button and it, if you click here the button then it will give me the prediction there's normal transaction or the fraud transactions so this is how the credit card fraud prediction actually work and how can you um, handle the data imbalanced okay so that's it for today now and hope you enjoyed the tutorial and make sure to subscribe to the channels and don't forget to hit the bell icon and i'll be back with another tutorial so till then take care and bye bye